بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار مرحبا بكم جميعا أهلا وسهلا We continue with the explanation of شر السنة or the explanation of the سنة by الإمام البابهاري May Allah have mercy upon him with the explanation of the noble sheikh Salih al-Fawzan حفيظه الله تعالى in the last class, we were covering the point that the Sheikh was stressing, and that is, it is not possible for the Muslims to be united except that they unite upon the correct creed. For this is what united the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when at one point there was war between them specifically the Ansar from the tribes of al Aws al Khazraj there were years and years of war and fighting and bloodshed between them and nothing was able to bring harmony between them except for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's religion So the Shaykh mentioned that if the people they want to unite the Muslims, then upon them is to correct their creed first and foremost. The creed that the messengers from the first of them to the last of them used to have concern for and they began their da'wah with. So once their creed becomes one first and foremost, then the ummah can you be united then the Ummah can be united upon that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, he mentioned, فَنَّقُولُ لَهُمْ لَنْ تَسْتَطِيعُوا أَنْ تَجْمَعُوا الْمُسْلِمِينَ عَلَى غَيْرِ الْعَقِيدَةِ الصَّحِيحَةِ إِذْ لَوْ تَوَحَدَتِ الْعَقِيدَةِ لَجْتَمَعُوا بِسُهُولَةً قال الله تعالى هو الذي أيدك بنصره وبالمؤمنين وألف بين قلوبهم لو أنفقت ما في الأرض جميعا ما ألفت بين قلوبهم ولكن الله ألف بينهم إنه عزيز حكيم شيخ صالح فوزان حفيد الله تعالى he mentions that we say to them that you will never be able to unite the Muslims upon other than the correct Aqidah. Again, you will never be able to unite the Muslims upon other than the correct Aqidah. 
So if the aqidah of the Muslims become one, meaning if everyone believes the same, meaning believe the way that the Prophet wasallam believed, the Shaykh is not calling to believing with a belief that's other than the creed of the Prophet wasallam and the Sahaba. Rather, what is meant by the, the Aqidah becomes one, meaning that everyone believes the way that the Prophet wasallam believed in the Sahaba. And if we believe the way the Prophet wasallam believed as well as the Sahaba, then we will be guided. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِهْتَدَوْا And if they believe in the likes of that which you believe in, and you here, meaning you or Muhammad and your companions, that if they believe in the likes of that which you or Muhammad and the companions believe in, then they'll be guided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here connected guidance to believing in the likes of that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa believed in and the Sahaba. Now we understand the opposite of this affair. That if the people do not believe in the likes of that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the Sahaba believed in, then they will not be guided, rather they will be misguided. So the Shaykh Hafizullah ta'ala, he mentions that if the Aqidah can become one, then the Muslims will unite with ease. Meaning if we all believed with the Aqidah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi then you will find that the Muslims will unite with ease. There will be no difficulty in uniting. Because the creed will rectify the actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions that he is the one who has aided you, O Muhammad, with his help and by way of the believers. And Allah, he is the one who has brought harmony between their hearts. And if you, O Muhammad, was to have spent everything that's in the earth, you would not have been able to bring harmony between their hearts. However, it is Allah who has brought harmony between their hearts, and indeed, he is almighty and all wise. That's Surah Al-Anfal, verses 62 to 63. Here in this verse, or in these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes first and foremost that he is the one who aided the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by sending his help to him and by way of giving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam companions who would stand by his side aiding him and supporting him propagate the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah mentions that Allah is the one who that he Allah is the one who brought harmony between their hearts meaning after the people were warring with one another and had enmity towards one another, and hatred towards one another, and shed the blood of one another, and other than that, from the violations of the human rights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brought harmony between them, and united their hearts. And then Allah mentions to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and if you was to have spent everything which is in the earth, you would not have been able to bring harmony between their hearts. So this is a statement from Allah establishing that it is not the worldly matters. It is not the dunyawi matters that's going to bring harmony between the hearts of the people. And people have this understanding that they can use worldly affairs to try to bring the people together. So this one he tries to use wealth. This one he tries to call an individual by the promises of status. This one calls an individual to join and come together with the promise of this or promise of that from the worldly affairs. This doesn't bring true harmony between the people. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, that had the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spent everything that was in the earth, it would not have brought harmony between people. But Allah is the one who brought harmony between them. And he is almighty or wise. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reminding this ummah that he is the one who has brought harmony between the believers. And how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring harmony between the believers? By his might. Because Allah is al-Aziz, he's almighty, capable of doing all things. 
and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise, meaning that there is wisdom and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uniting between the hearts of the believers. And how were their hearts united? Their hearts were united by the Quran and the Sunnah. So when the people oppose the Quran and the Sunnah, this causes disunity between the hearts of the people. As was mentioned in the last class, that the sins and the acts of disobedience, that these matters cause separation between the people. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, مَا تَحَابَثْنَا فِي اللَّهِ أَوْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ فَيُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا ذَنْبٌ أَحْدَثَهُ أَحَدَهُمَا أَوْ يُحْدِثُهُ أَحَدَهُمَا أَوْ كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Prophet mentioned that there are no two people who love one another for the sake of Allah or the sake of Islam, that something will cause separation between them two except for a sin that one of them has committed. وقال الله تعالى واذكروا نعمة الله عليكم إذ كنتم أعداء فألف بين قلوبكم فأصبحتم بنعمته إخوانا وكنتم على شفاء حفرة من النار فأنقذكم منها كذلك يبين الله لكم آياته لعلكم تهتدون الله يمنشنت in سورة آل إمران verse 103 and remember the favor of Allah upon you when you used to be enemies one to another, and then Allah brought harmony between your hearts, and you became, by the favor of Allah upon you, brothers, meaning brothers in faith. And you were on the brink of the, on the pit of the hellfire, and Allah, he saved you from it. Likewise, Allah clarifies for you his signs in order that you may be guided. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the believers of the bounty that he has bestowed upon them by bringing them together, with true unity, when they used to be enemies to one another prior to Allah uniting their hearts by way of Islam. So true unity upon the religion is a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, and this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls a ni'mah. A ni'mah, a favor from us, the people are united upon the religion, that the Muslims are united upon Islam. It is not a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the people outwardly are united. But inwardly, they have different creeds. Or inwardly, they are not united. And there is enmity and hatred. But some people, because their concern is the affairs of this world, they are satisfied with outwardly, out, outwardly looking as if there is one united front. But in reality, there is no unity. There is no unity upon that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So individuals, they fall for this deception of the shaitan, thinking that this is something that is praiseworthy. The only praise the individual may receive is from the ignorant people, those who don't know any better. But as for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not praiseworthy, this is blameworthy. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions regarding the Jews, تَحْسَبُهُمْ جَمِيعًا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ شَتَّى That you think that they are together, but their hearts are separate. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed the Jews and their methodology to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions and the rest of the ummah. That the Jews apparently look like they are together as one united front, but the reality is that they are differing amongst one another. So if the people in Islam want to have this false sense of unity similar to the Jews, then know that this is something that is not uh, uh, praiseworthy by Allah, rather is blameworthy. Because Allah is condemning them and criticizing them for outwardly being united, but their hearts are separate from one another. What's important is that the hearts are united upon the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the hearts are united upon the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi That's what's important. That's what's praiseworthy with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That's going to bring about benefit for the Muslim Ummah and for the individuals. Because the individuals, they benefit from Muslim unity. There are many benefits in Muslim unity, but it has to be upon the truth, Ikhwan. Barakallahu Fikum. We have a lot of people...
in these days and times, they mention what the ulama have stated about having unity amongst Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And they promote what the ulama have stated about unity amongst Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. But the reality of the affair, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, these same individuals, they do not work diligently towards bringing about unity. Rather, we find that some of these individuals, unfortunately, may Allah guide us and them, unity has to be based upon their personal conditions and their personal agendas. Not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has stipulated in the Quran and not what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has stipulated in the Sunnah. So when you talk to these individuals, you find them mentioning, oh, there can be no unity except that this is done, or that is done, or this is done. And none of it is connected to implementing the Book of Allah, following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or the methodology of the Sahaba. Rather, it's personal matters you find individuals propagating or pushing in order for there to be true unity. And that's not unity, rather it's submission to an individual's personal agenda or specific group's personal agenda. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has requested from us or required for us to do. Rather, this is just going to lead to more separation and more enmity and hatred amongst the ranks of the people of the sunnah. And until the people conform to that which Allah has mentioned and this one was found in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi with the understanding of the Sahaba truly taking the advice of the ulama of the scholars of Al-Islam until we do this we will not have true unity but when we begin to be sincere in that which we propagate and be sincere in our learning this religion and be sincere in our practical application of the religion we will see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us and bestow his favor upon us as he did for those who came before us. The Shaykh mentioned Rahimahu al Hafidhullah Ta'ala Shaykh Salih Fawzan, may Allah preserve him. فَلَنْ يَجْمَعَ النَّاسِ إِلَّا الْعَقِيدَةُ الصَّحِيحَا أَلَّتِي جَاءَتْ بِهَا الرَّسُولِ مِنْ أَوَّلِهِمْ إِلَى خَاتَمِهِمْ مُحَمَّدًا صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The Shaykh mentioned that nothing will unite the people except for the correct Aqeedah. That which the messengers came with from the first of them to the seal of the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he mentions the statement of Allah. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَ مَنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ And we have not sent from before you a messenger or Muhammad except that we revealed to him none has the right to be worshipped except for me, therefore worship me. So here the Shaykh, he brings this, vo this verse in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse number 25, to establish that the prophets and the messengers, they had one creed, they had one call. And for this reason, the prophets and the messengers, they were all brothers to one another, and they were all united, although we find that they came at different times and eras. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, Al-Anbiya ikhwatun li'allat. Ummahatuhum shatta wa dinuhum wahid. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that the prophets are paternal brothers. Their mothers are different, but their religion is one. So here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is establishing that there was unity amongst the prophets and the messengers. And he described them as being paternal brothers, meaning that the paternal brothers are brothers who have the same father. That's how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi described the unity and the connection between all of the prophets and messengers. They are like paternal brothers. Their mothers are different, meaning their legislation is different from time to time, but their religion is one, meaning the foundation is still one foundation. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he mentions, وَإِنَّ هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَأَنَا رَبُّكُمْ فَاتَّقُونَ and Allah mentions that indeed this nation of yours is one nation, and I am your Lord, therefore fear me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in another verse, In هَذِهِ أُمَّتُكُمْ أُمَّةً وَاحِدَةً وَأَنَّ رَبُّكُمْ فَعْبُدُونَ 
And indeed, this nation of yours is one nation, and I am your Lord, therefore worship me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes that the Ummah is one Ummah, that the Ummah is one Ummah, meaning that the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to be upon one methodology, one creed. We have one Lord that we worship, and we have one Prophet that we follow, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And whatever is in opposition to the book of our Lord and the sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then this is something that we abandon and we leave off. Because if we oppose the book of Allah and oppose the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this will lead to destruction. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He mentions, فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ عَمْرِهِ and to sibahum fitna or yusibahum azabun alim. Let them be aware, those who oppose his commandment, that some trial or tribulation will befall him or a painful torment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions, Woman you shaqit your rasul, mimba adima tabayan alahul huda, or yet tabia, gaira sabil mubini, no wali hi ma tawala wa nustihi jahanna wa sa at masira. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that whoever opposes the messenger after the guidance has been made clear, meaning the person knows better and they oppose the religion of Allah. Allah says, and then they follow a way other than the way of the believers, meaning they follow a methodology other than the methodology of the Sahaba. For the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are the first believers. Allah mentions we will turn that person to that which he turned himself to, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn that individual to the misguidance that he has chosen. As Allah mentions, فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ Allah mentions, so when they deviated, Allah deviated their hearts. So Allah mentions, he will turn them to that which he turned himself to and burn them in hell with what an evil abode. So here is a threat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who oppose his religion. Those who oppose his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that a fitna will be for them, some trial will be for them, or a painful punishment will be for them. Or Allah mentions in the other verse, those who oppose his messenger and follow away other than the way of the Sahaba, that Allah will turn this person to that which he turned himself to and burn him in hell with an evil abode. So this Ummah is one nation. Our Lord is one, our Prophet is one. And if we hold fast to worshiping our Lord alone and worshiping Him in the manner that was taught to us by the one and only prophet that we have for ourselves, then this will bring about that oneness of this Ummah. So we have, as the scholars mentioned, Tawheed al-Mursil wa Tawheed al-Mursal. We single out the one who has sent the messengers, meaning we single out Allah with all acts of worship, with Tawheed al-Mursal. And we single out the one who has been sent, meaning we single out the messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be followed unrestrictedly. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the only one that we follow and obey unrestrictedly. As for anyone else, Besides the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then the person's statement can be accepted or rejected. If the person's statement agrees with the truth, then it is accepted. If the person's statement agrees with other than the truth, then that statement is rejected. And we do not have this sense of al-wala wal-bara based upon individuals unrestrictedly other than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have individuals, unfortunately, if you oppose a person who may have a name or the likes, that the followers were around the individual, they deem that the person who oppose their leader or their figurehead as being a deviant and has opposed the principles of al Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Or the person is in opposition to the Sunnah. And from other than that, we find the statements of the people they make. When in reality, the individuals who are in opposition may have a right to be in opposition. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us with, nor is this commanded by the sunnah. And this 
type of behavior will not bring about unity in the community. The Sheikh mentioned, لا يتوحدون إلا على إبادة رب واحد وهو الله سبحانه وتعالى لأنه هو الرب الحق وغيره باطل قال الله تعالى ذلك بأن الله هو الحق وأن ما يدعون من دونه هو الباطل وأن الله هو العلي الكبير The Sheikh mentioned that the Muslims will not be united as one nation except that they are upon the worship of one Lord and he is Allah the Most High and the Glorified because he Allah he is the, the, the true Lord and other than him is falsehood as Allah mentions in Surah Al-Hajj that is because Allah he is the truth and that which is other than Allah or that which they call on besides Allah it is falsehood and Allah he is the, the Most High and the Most Great so Sheikh Salih Fawzan he mentioned فهذا هو مجال توحيد المسلمين إن كانوا صادقين فليصحح الأقيدة وينف عنها الزيغ والدخيل لتكون كما جاء بها محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لأجل أن المسلمين يتوحدون عليها شيخ صالح فوزان حفظه الله تعالى he mentions that this is the area or the angle where the Muslims can be united if they are truthful. And this is important that the Sheikh mentions this, because you hear a lot of people in these days and times hollering about Muslim unity, and the Muslims need to be together. And wallahi, this is the truth. The Muslims, they need to be together, and they need to be united. But united upon what? We just want to unite just for the sake of we all Muslims, or are we going to unite upon the truth? That which is commanded by Allah, that we unite upon the truth, and not that we unite upon falsehood. So the people are truth, truthful in their claim of one in unity amongst the Muslims, then as the Shaykh said, فَلْيُسَحِهُ الْأَقِيدَةِ Then let them rectify the matter of the Aqidah. Let them fix their belief system first and foremost. And let them remove the matters of deviation and the outward influences that have entered into it. Let them remove that. In order that the Ummah, or in order that the Aqidah can be like that which the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with, and in order that the Muslims can unite upon it. The Sheikh he says, وَهَذَا هُوَ الَّذِي أَرَادَهُ السَّلَفِ كَلْبَرْ بَهَارِ وَغَيْرِهِ مِنْ تَعْرِفِ هَذِهِ الرَّسَائِلِ وَهَذِهِ الْقُطُفِ فِي بَيَانِ الْعَقِيدَةِ الصَّحِيحَةِ The Shaykh mentioned that this is the likes of what is intended by the Salaf, meaning the early generations of Muslims, like Al-Imam al-Barbahari and other than him, when they had offered these treaties and they offered these books clarifying the correct Aqidah. Meaning that the scholars of the past, when they wrote the, the works that they wrote and mentioned the things that they mentioned within them, it was for the point of establishing the unity of the Muslim Ummah and protecting them from falling into deviation and separation. Because just as the Tawheed of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, unites the Muslims, the opposite of that separates the Muslims. Meaning shirk and bid'ah causes deviation or uh, separation and, and it causes enmity and disunity amongst the Muslims. So when the Salaf, they wrote their books, they wrote their books stressing the matter of the Tawheed of Allah and stressing the matter of following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we find in their books that they warned against the affairs of shirk and they warned against the affairs of innovation because innovation and shirk causes separation between the Muslims. The Shaykh mentions, لَمَّا حَدَثَتِ الْفِتَنْ والافتراقات والضلالات كتبوا هذه الأقائد يشرحون بها السنة التي كان عليها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه والقرون المفضلة التي من لزمها نجا ومن حاد عنها هلكا التي قال فيها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ترتكم على البيضاء ليلها كنهارها 
the Sheikh mentions that when the trials and tribulations took place and the separations amongst the Muslims and the misguidance have taken place amongst the Muslim Ummah, those scholars, they wrote these matters of creed, explaining by way of it the sunnah which the Messiah وسلم, and his companions and the virtuous generations were upon. The creed which, if a person was to hold on to it, he will, he will attain salvation. And whoever opposes it, then he is destroyed. Just as the Messenger وسلم, said concerning it, I have left you upon that which is white and clear. Its night is like his day. And as the Prophet mentioned, لا يزيغ عنها إلا حالك And that no one deviates from that which I have left you with except for one who is destroyed. So understand, Barakallahu Fikum, that the Prophet Wasallam he left us upon a clear religion. And all we have to do is follow. We don't have to try to reinvent the will as is stated. All we have to do is follow. As the Sahaba, they would say, اِتَّبِعُوا وَلَا تَبْتَدِعُوا فَقَدْ كُفِيتُمْ Follow, meaning follow the religion, and don't, in, don't innovate, don't add nothing to the religion, for you have been sufficed. The problem that we have amongst the Muslims is that people want to add stuff to the religion that is not from the religion. The religion is perfect. بَارَكَ فِيكُمْ You cannot add anything to Islam to make Islam better. And you cannot take something away from Islam that there is no need for. The religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a perfect way of life. And all we have to do is just follow the script. But the problem comes about when people, they want to become intellectuals. And this one wants to add this to the religion. And this one wants to take this away from the religion. And this one has his own idea of what's going to bring about Muslim unity. And this one has his own solution for the problems of the Muslim ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, الْيَوْمَ يَئِسَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ دِينِكُمْ فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا Allah mentions that this day, those who disbelieve have given up hope from your religion, so do not fear them, but fear me. And then Allah, he mentions that on this day, I have completed for you your religion, uh, on this day I have perfected for you your religion, and I have completed upon you my favor, and I am pleased for you Islam as a way of life. That's Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 3. Surah 5, verse 3. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He establishes in this verse that He has perfected the religion, and that He has completed His favor upon us, meaning Islam is a favor upon us, and he is pleased for us Islam as a deen, as a way of life, as a religion. And as Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala stated, that whoever introduces something into this religion that's not from it, and he sees it as being something good, then he has claimed that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam betrayed the message that was given to him to convey. Because Allah stated in the Qur'an, and this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and I am pleased for you Islam as a religion or way of life. And then Imam Malik went on to say, مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ يَوْمَ إِدِنْ دِينَا فَلَا يَكُمْ الْيَوْمَ دِينَا Imam Malik rahimahullah ta'ala he stated, so whatever wasn't the religion on that day, then it is not the religion today. And inshallah ta'ala we will stop at this point. And whatever is correct, the praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And whatever is incorrect, it is for myself. I encourage you, my noble brothers and sisters in our Islam, please purify your intentions. Purify your aqidah, purify your ibadah, purify your character. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Learn your deen and practice what you know of this religion. And you will be successful. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us amongst those who learn and practice that which we know and forgive us all for our shortcomings. 
وَسُبْحَانَكَ